So, all right. Well, with that said, let's get started with our uh, Power 30. Our guest today, Tard Archambault uh, with E Credit Advisors. Um, in addition to being an awesome golfer, uh, Todd is just an all around really, really good dude. Um, Todd, good morning. Morning. Thanks, Joe. And so, what, Joe, is it cool to do a little bit of overview of our company, what, what we do, how we do it, and then get into a little bit of information? Absolutely. And that's that's typically where we're going to start is a little bit about you and, and the company and your background. Okay. Awesome. All right, guys. Thanks for having me. Um, so eCredit Advisor, we are a credit repair company. We are only in the mortgage space. So everything we do is with the goal in mind to get the client uh, you know, mortgage eligible. Uh, a little bit of background on our company. We're founded in 2004. We're A plus rated with the BBB. We're 4.8 out of five stars on Google reviews. I'm really proud of that, given the space that we're in. Um, I would encourage you guys to Google us and read the bad reviews. You're going to see that every single one of those bad reviews is clients that miss payments or add new collections during our process. If you don't pay your bills while you're in our program, we can't help you. Okay. <laughs> Um, just a fact, right? I mean, it's just small detail. <laughs> I'm so mad at my credit guy for not paying that payment for me. Right. We do not pay your bills for you. Um, our model is built on transparency, accountability, and education. And so everything we do is fully viewable by the client and our partners. So every phone conversation, every email, the status of everything we challenge with the bureaus, it's fully viewable again to the clients and to our partners. All right. We're a score driven model directly tied to lending. So lots of credit repair companies are deletion driven, uh, just about removing negative information off a credit report. That's good. But the other side of it is how do you build and leverage a credit profile to get the very most uh, out of the credit score? And so our goal with the customers to get their credit score as high as possible with the least amount of money out of their pocket. OK, our clients are not going to have perfect credit at the end of the process. We're not going to ask them to settle every single account. They don't usually have the money to do that. We take the path of least resistance and go, what's the easiest way to get this client to? Typically, it's a 620 or 640 credit score, which is entry level into, into FHA financing, right? Um, and, and the value that we add to the client is really twofold. Yes, we're going to delete typically between 40 and 50% of what's negative on a credit report. I get asked this all the time. Is the information you're removing off the credit report, is it really that customer's? Is it really their information? Yes, it is. The reason why we're able to get it removed is it's not reporting correctly, it's not co reporting completely, or the or the creditors aren't able to verify or validate that information. Our goal is to try and remove as much negative information off the credit profile as possible. Okay. The second part of the program is helping that client build and leverage their credit score. Okay. The, no, the, the most valuable thing on a credit report is credit cards. More valuable than any home loan, any auto loan, any other trade line. Credit cards are the greatest utility in helping a consumer build their credit score. You think about this, banks don't lend money to people that desperately need it. So how on a credit report can you show you have access to money you don't need? It's really through the responsible management of these credit cards. So every one of our customers is gonna get three credit cards regardless of your credit score. We have all the offers for the customer. All they have to do is apply. If your credit score is below 580, you're gonna get secured credit cards. If it's above 580, you're gonna get unsecured credit cards. Okay, and then you're going to use them the way that we teach you to use them. We want you to have a small $5 balance when your credit card company reports its balance to the credit bureaus on a $200 credit card. So now you're showing two and a half percent utilization. You're now showing that you got access to money you don't need. Okay, so we run the client through our program. Let's say we're successful. We delete 50% of the negative items. Let's say they started with a 480 credit score. We need to get to a 620. Okay, our program typically yields 20 points a month. The longest we charge any customer is six months. If it takes us longer than six months to fix your credit, there's no further charge to you. Okay. Hey, Tom, I, I want to jump in on that thought right there because I think that is absolutely critical. Um, there are other credit repair companies out there uh, that their objective is to keep you in credit repair for as long as possible because they keep dinging you every month. That's their recurring. I think that absolutely is one of those separators from you in your industry is that you're that committed and that sure about the process that you know you only need six months. I love that. So yeah, keep going. I appreciate, appreciate that. But here's the catch. Our program is a partnership with our customers. They are 50% responsible for the success of the program. It's honestly 20 points a month in our industry. So creditrepair.com brags about 10 points a month. They don't really generate that. It's less than that. We're more than double than that. The big difference here 
is our engagement with the customer. We actually pair each customer with one dedicated credit coach that works with them one-on-one -on -one through the entire process. Let's say we told you to get three credit cards up front. You said you're going to do it in the first 30 days. We're at 60 days and you haven't done that yet. What we're going to do is we're going to put the fi your file on hold. We're going to stop charging you. And until you get those three credit cards, your file's on hold. So we hold your account client accountable for the their success in the program as well. We're not just going to charge them and say, hey, at the end of six months, hey, you didn't get the credit card, so thanks for the money. We're going to, we're going to be responsible in this process. We're going to make them accountable. Okay. I like that. Hold the feet to the fire because you're right. You know, you can advise them all you want all day long, but if they're not actually taking actions on the things that are going to do it, it's wasting everybody's time. Yep, exactly right. Um, and, and again, so that dedicated credit coach that works one-on-one -on -one with that customer, it's through the entire process. Okay. So they're not dealing with five or six different people. There's going to be a consistency in, inf in information and communication throughout the process. To give you guys some stats from, from last year. So the average hold time of our customer was 119 days. So a day short of four months. The average score increase during that period of time was 82 points. Okay. And then from a program cost standpoint, when we do the, up for, the free upfront evaluation, we're going to, we're going to determine exactly what that cost is. And then we're going to break it down over the number of months that we think it's going to take. Usually our pay, our monthly payment, you can expect it to be $190. So for every, usually 20 points away, they are from their credit score goal. That's going to be $190. So if they're a 560 credit score and they need to get to a 640, it's going to typically be four months in our program. It's going to be four payments of 190 for a total of 760. Okay, let's say that that client with a 560 credit score, let's say four months down the road, we repull their credit and we don't have them quite to that 640 credit score. Let's say they're a 622. As long as they've done what we've asked, as long as they've been engaged in the process, we don't go back to that client for any more money. Any further work we do for that customer is completely free of charge. And the last thing I'll say is our program is fully guaranteed. So if we don't perform, your customer will get 100% of their money back. In addition to that, we will continue to work with them until we get the results that we told them that we would get. Okay. Guaranteed. I love that. Oh, very good. Yeah. Um, so who's a good customer for us? Anybody that you guys are denying due to a low credit score is a good customer for us. Okay. All we're looking for is a name, phone number. Um, and if, if your lender is pulling the credit, a, a conversation with that lender would be helpful. A lender credit report is the best credit report to get. I'm sure you guys have lots of customers that come to you and say, hey, I'm a, I'm a 680 on Credit Karma and a lender pulls it and they're a 600 mid credit score, right? The difference between a Credit Karma credit score and a lender's credit score, one is a Vantage scoring model, one is a FICO scoring model, okay? So it is apples to oranges. The only way to get the FICO 10 scoring model is to have a lender pull the report. And so good for good conversation for you guys. If you have a client in front of you that's struggling to fill out an app, and usually the only reason why they're struggling to fill out an app is because they have poor credit, right? Good motivator is, hey, we got to find out where you stand. All of these other sites that are telling you where your credit score is doesn't mean anything, unfortunately. We've got to have a lender pre-approve you. We got to have that lender credit score so we know exactly where you stand, okay? Well, hey, Todd, you know, there's a couple of thoughts on this because a lot of times people um, are, are, you know, interested how we come in contact with them. They're interested in buying. Uh, but I also know that there's a lot of people that are not in that position to be able to buy yet. Um, they might be moving to rent for the time being. And it's not always credit derivative or driven. It's a lot of times just market factors. And getting that credit in shape now is absolutely critical. So when they are ready to buy, they're way ahead of the game. So. Yep. I, I, I like what you're talking about in terms of we got a great lender here with Kerry Phillips uh, is, is one of our lender partners here at the Synergy Group, which I know you already do a lot of work with Kerry. Yeah, so, so Kerry and I go back 18 years. I started the company in 04 and she was one of the very first lenders that came on board with us. And yeah, we've maintained that partnership uh, since 2004. And yeah, she's one of the very best in the Valley, not only from, from the service and work she does, but also from a volume standpoint. I think that's a testament to uh, both of you, the fact that you guys have been able to keep that relationship going. Uh, I find that good professionals always tend to surround themselves with other really good professionals. Hey, Joe, can I mention one thing here, a perspective yeah. I have? Um, so since I'm pretty tied in right now with Carrie and I've seen kind of the backside of the whole lending world from a realtor's perspective, um, I was really paying attention to the numbers that Todd was giving, not just because I love numbers, but because 
I see every day now these borrowers who are paying extra to get access to financing. So sometimes they're paying points because they want a lower rate that they can't get because their credit score doesn't dictate that rate. And that is costing them way more than $760 <laughs> when they do that. It's costing them three, $4,000 sometimes. So like, I, I mean, I'm not just saying this as I like as piling on, you know, or as a sales pitch for Todd, it is way less expensive for somebody to go get it right with Todd and then come to the table for the loan than to go to the table for the loan and pay for that credit a different way. Well, I was just thinking that's, that's on a house. They talk about cars. That's something people are buying a lot more frequently. You know, you, you, you get the rate that you see on the TV or the billboard or the radio ad or, you know, whatever that great rate is, it's all going to be tied to your ability for a strong credit report. So yeah, it, it, it shows up everywhere. Okay, Todd, we jumped in. Didn't mean okay. to cut off too much of your flow. We'll hand the reins back to you. Keep going, buddy. No, all good. All good. So uh, we mentioned there up front, front, we do a free evaluation for the customer. We do that evaluation as much for us as we do for the customer, right? So just because you send us a client doesn't mean we're automatically enrolling in the program. As I mentioned earlier, our program is fully guaranteed. We want to make sure we can help this customer before we onboard them. Some customers don't really need our help. Some customers, maybe with some credit challenges, maybe it's just their credit score themselves, and maybe it's just a utilization. So all they need to do is restructure some debt. Or if they have no credit score at all, they just need to establish some secure credit cards. We're not going to charge a customer for that consultation. There's nothing that we're going to do for them, putting them through the program. We're not going to charge them anything. Okay. Um, what else can I go to here? Our process, so back to the free upfront evaluation. In that evaluation, we'll break it down into two categories. Again, what we can expect from the customer and also what we're going to demand or what we'll demand from the customer. And then secondly, what they can expect from us. Again, we're not going to be able to delete everything off of a credit report. Um, typically, the results are going to be 40 to 50%. Okay. The second piece of that is what's, what do you do with what's left on a credit report, right? Um, and I'm going to get into a little bit of what makes common sense oftentimes doesn't make credit sense. A lot of times we get clients that say, hey, I've been working on my credit and I just recently paid all my collection accounts off. And what I've seen is my credit score go down, not up. Why is that? Well, everything on your credit report is governed by what's called date of last activity, which is the date that you, the consumer, last made payment or charge in the account. OK, and the reason why you could have a collection account from 2015 that you pay it today and it lowers your credit score is because now you've just brought in that 2015 collection, let's say with a $500 balance, right? To a, to a now a paid collection with a zero balance from 2022. From a banking perspective, what's more relevant? A, a seven-year-old collection with a $500 balance or a paid collection from today's date? By paying that collection today, you're now gonna allow that creditor to report that paid collection on your credit report for another seven years. Wow. Okay. Our program is not about perfect credit. I mentioned that up front. It's about how we strategically get the most out of the client's credit score. Okay. So those items that remain on the credit report at the end of the program, that 50% of what they started with, how do we strategically get their credit score above the 640 mark? And what do they really need to look at? Not everything in collections you should be paying. Typically, if an item is older than two years, we're not going to recommend you pay it. Why? Because paying it's actually going to lower your credit score because you're going to re-age the debt and bring it current on your credit profile. Okay. I, I think, Todd, th this kind of information to me is absolutely priceless because whether it's agents working with their buyers or even agents looking at their own circumstance, you know, um, or as we tend to get questions from family and friends and neighbors and how, how should I handle this? I mean, that's, that's absolutely critical advice. Thank you. Yep. No. Nope. So, and, and Joe, part of the presentation I did a couple of weeks ago, we had a few other things on there that people just maybe don't know about credit. Um, you know, th there was a few questions I'd ask the group here. Um, an account and collections, does it always appear on your credit report? Mm. Okay. I, I don't know. I don't know the answer. So here's, here's the way the system works today. The creditors pay the bureaus a fee to report the information on the consumer's behalf. Mm. Okay. So let's say that again. The creditors pay the bureaus a fee to report the information on the consumer's behalf. If the creditor doesn't pay the bureaus a fee, that item is not going to appear on your credit report. The creditor is also going to choose which one of or all three of the credit bureaus to report your information. 
Okay, that's why you have three different credit scores and that's why you have different information on each of the three credit bureaus. Not necessarily every creditor is gonna to report to all three bureaus and the credit bureaus do not share information. Okay, make sense? That totally that's makes sense. sense. That's, I mean, I've, I've seen that with clients before uh, where it shows up on, you know, TransUnion or whatever and, and not on the other. So that explains why. Yep. And something good to, to understand here is if you're, if you're negotiating with a creditor, let's say you're trying to negotiate for a deletion agreement, payment for deletion, and the creditor comes back to you and says, well, I don't have the ability to, to delete it from the bureaus. The bureaus just publish, it, publish the information. That's absolutely false. The creditor has full leverage. The creditor can do whatever they want. So if the creditor gives you a deletion letter, you send that to the bureaus, that item's coming off your credit report. So uh, again, nice. the creditors pay the bureaus a fee. Think of, think, of, think of the credit bureaus as just as data aggregators and publishers. What they receive is what they push on the credit report. That's it. Okay? That's pretty good. So that BS line, those, oh, we can't, we can't remove that. Don't fall for it. Get it in writing and get that in your hands. I love that. Yeah. And, and, and anytime you have any customer that's dealing with a creditor, always make sure that you do get that information in writing. If you have a call with a, a creditor and they're agreeing to do certain things and you hang up the phone and 30 days later, that information is still on your report or they haven't done what they said they're going to do. You're now starting from square one. If you get that information from in writing, you can now leverage it yourself. You know, okay. that's, how, that's almost like doing a real estate transaction where, you know, you just... Because somebody says, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to leave all these things for you, like the refrigerator, washer, dryer. You, you probably should get that in writing. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so another thing that comes up, prepaid cards versus secure cards, or secure credit cards. What's the difference? Prepaid cards versus secure. What's the difference in terms of how it affects your credit? Yeah. I would imagine prepaid cards probably don't show up on your credit much. You're, no, you're exactly right. So... And the way that they're done is the exact same. So prepaid cards, you put the money on up, up, up front, right? You advance the money and then, then you get to spend that. A secure credit card is basically the same thing. You're going to put money down. However, however, you're going to put it on deposit. You securitize the financing. And from there, it operates like a normal credit card. The major difference, which you pointed out, prepaid credit cards do not report to credit. Secure credit cards do. And so that's the big thing when you're trying to build credit. Would a secure card act almost like a debit card? You're putting money into an account? No, no, okay. no. So the only difference between an unsecure and a, and a secure credit card is upfront, how, how you securitize that debt. The unsecured credit, because your credit score is high enough, they're not going to come to you with any any fee or any, uh, any preload. Whereas with a secure credit, they are going to require money on deposit. With a lot of secure credit card companies, that money actually goes into an interest bearing account. And usually they'll have a program where they're going to graduate you from a secure credit card to an unsecure credit card. And when they do that, they're going to give you back the money you put on deposit, as well as the interest that has accrued uh, on that money in deposit while they've done that. So, and usually it's going to take 12 months to graduate from a secured to an unsecured credit card. Awesome. Um, what else can I tell you here? So we did this one as well. Just the value of a trade line on a credit report, right? So what, what would you think is a more valuable item on your report? A $25,000 auto loan with an 80% balance on it, a $360,000 home loan with a 90% balance on it, or a $500 credit card with a $100 balance? Now I'm going to cheat because in the beginning, you gave us a clue to the answer. You said that the credit cards were the most valuable. So I'm going to go C, credit card. Yep. No, for sure. Credit cards are, the, are by far the most valuable item on a credit report. Again, if you think about it from a banking perspective, you think about this from a traditional lending standpoint. So if, any, if something happens outside the norm of your life, where, where is your access to get money from a credit standpoint? It's only through credit cards. You can't suck it out of your auto. You can't, through traditional means, suck it out of your home unless you're refinancing that. Okay. Go ahead, Cody. Cody, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I have a different question on a different subject. Are you ready for that? Sure. So um, the really low end credit scores, they're, they're obviously ones that make sense to come to you. The people who already have a really high established credit score, maybe not. But what about the guys that are in the middle that they do qualify for the FHA financing, but they want their score to be higher? Does, does the program have the same effect on them? So that's a loaded question. It really depends on their credit profile, right? So think of a credit report like a fingerprint where it's unique to everybody. So everybody's got a unique set of circumstances, unique set of, of credit types of credit on their credit 
how long they've had credit, all of those are going to be factors in there. So I can't give you a blank and answer that, yes, we can help everybody with a mid credit score range, but it, it is a case by case basis. And again, that's why we do the free upfront evaluation. We, you might, you might send us a 680 credit score that we really can't do anything on. You might send us a 740 credit score that we can absolutely help. Does that make sense? Okay. And the 680 credit score that we can't help, they might not have any negatives. It might be just percentage of utilization. Whereas that 750 credit score might have a few old medical collections from three, four, five years ago, and they've got great credit other than that, but it's just those few remarks that's hurting them from having an even higher credit score. Does that make sense? Yeah. Can I ask another question that I have? Yeah, sure. Um, so I hear this all the time from clients. This lender ran my credit and my credit score went down. I don't want to have other, I don't, you know, I, I might say, you know, I have another lender that might be a better deal for you. I don't want them to, cause I don't want to lower my credit. I want, everyone's afraid that getting the credit pulled hurts their credit. What is the truth about pulling credit and credit scores? Okay, so there's two types of credit pulls first. There's, there's hard inquiries and there's soft inquiries. And the way to differentiate between the two, anytime that a financial decision is determined on that credit pull, that is a hard credit pull. Mm -hmm. A hard credit pull is going to count anywhere from three to five points against your credit score, and it's going to stay on your credit report for two years. Okay? A soft credit pull is just you, you the consumer, can pull your credit score every day if you want, right? And you're just viewing your credit and seeing what's on there. That's a soft pull and there's no impact to your credit score whatsoever, okay? Now, let's say that you're shopping for a mortgage. Let's say you went to one loan mortgage company and you pulled credit and you weren't, you're suspect of the rate and you wanna go somewhere else. And it's within a 30 day window, okay? Because you're pulling credit with the same, for the same intended purpose, an, a home loan, and it's within a 30 day loan the time period, credit pulls of like kind, meaning you're shopping for the same thing within a 30 day window will wrap into one hard inquiry after 30 days. During that 30 day process, each time your credit pulled, yes, you're going to see your credit score go a little lower. Okay. After the 30 days, all of those hard inquiries of like kind are going to wrap into one hard inquiry. It's the exact same thing when you're shopping for an auto, right? We all know if you go to a car dealer, A, you should never go to a car dealership for financing. You always go to your bank and get pre-approved. But if you walk onto a dealership and you're going to get approved for financing, they're going to do what's called shotgunning your credit. They're going to pu pull your credit somewhere between six and nine times because they're looking for the bank that's going to pay them the biggest fee, right? It's called a big. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Say that again. Yeah. So you walk onto a dealership. Most dealerships are going to pull your credit six to nine times because they're shopping for, they're shopping for the bank that's going to pay them the biggest VIG. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. 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 The, whoever's on the iPhone with the wow. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah. So, and so this happens all the time for our customers, right? And here's the thing you mentioned auto loans up front and, and, and your, your credit helping with that. Our average com customers coming to us paying close to 20% on an auto loan and they have no idea. They know what their monthly payment is, but they really don't know what their cost of financing is. And if you think about dealerships and the way they, if you think about dealerships and the way they sell cars, what can you afford a month? They don't even talk to you about the value of the vehicle. They don't talk to you about your cost of financing. Everything's based on what you can afford monthly. And then they lock you in. And our population, they're not smart enough to ask the questions. Wow. God, this is, this is even better than the last time I sat through this. Thank you. Um, any, Cody, you good? Yeah, thank you. Appreciate okay. that. Yeah, no problem at all. Um, we talked, so we were talking a little bit about collection accounts. We were talking a little bit about the reporting of information to the credit bureaus. So a couple of key points here. If you guys have clients that are working with, with creditors, always make sure that they're going to get documentation in writing. In terms of paying for deletion, that's typically the only point where we would want um, a client to, to pay a collection account is if they're willing to delete it off a credit report. It is, again, 100% up to that creditor whether they want to delete it or not. It's not that they can't, it's either their policy is or they're not willing to do it, right? Um, and again, if they're willing to delete it, make sure that they get, you get it in writing, okay? Um, back to our program, kind of the, the process here. So I talked about the evaluation. I talked about when we onboard the client. I talked about 
when we remove, remove 40 to 50% of, of what's on a client's credit report, I'd say the most value that we add to the cu customer is towards the end of the program when we're repulling a credit for a second time. Okay. Once, once we've removed 40 to 50% off of your credit report, and there are lots of companies in our space, I wouldn't say lots, but the, the best credit repair companies in terms of deletions get about the same deletion results as we do. Okay. But from a strategic standpoint of once you've removed what you can off a credit report and what to do next, I would challenge very few companies in our space know what, what, what we do with regards to what's remaining on the report and how to get the most out of it with the least amount of money. Negotiating with creditors, knowing how to negotiate. You never want to get into repayment on a debt that's negative on your credit report. Anytime that you settle any account with a creditor, you want to do a one-time settlement. And the reason for that is if you've got a negative account that's been in collections on your credit report for two years, right? It's been in collections for two years. And now you start to make monthly payments on it. You've just taken a two-year-old debt and brought it current on your credit report. It's a closed account that now has an outstanding balance that is active. Okay, so from a DTI issue, it's, it's going to show in your file, it's going to be active, right? You're, you're lowering your credit score every single month you're making a payment. Okay, and so our clients that go through this process, we're never going to have them get into repayment on an account. We're going to tell you up front to save your money. I can't tell you exactly what's going to come off your credit report. I can't tell you exactly where your credit score is going to be in 120 days, but it's going to be close. And when it's close, we're going to need a little bit of your money to get you over the, the, the ledge. And we're gonna help you negotiate with some of these creditors so that you get the very most in terms of your credit score return and the most for your bang for your buck. Okay. Ooh, um, that's like right. sitting around a campfire right now. It's yeah. like warming my hands. This is, I've been in this industry 27 years and every time I hear you talk, I learned some several things that are powerful. So we've got a couple of minutes to wrap up and then I, I I'll, whatever, a bow you want to put on this conversation, let's do that. And then uh, I want to make sure everybody knows how to get in contact with you. All right, awesome. Um, uh, from a program perspective, what do our services co cost? It's a loaded question because we don't know where we're starting for with the, that customer, right? That, that free upfront evaluation we do for the customer, again, it's as much for us as it is for them. We set their expectations, we set our cost, and we set the timeline that they're going to pay us, Okay. Just because you have two clients with a 580 credit score does not mean they're going to be in the same program. It's really based on the content of what's on their credit report and what they're facing. So every program is unique to them. Okay. And again, a good benchmark for us, our program typically yields 20 points a month. That is a very good measuring stick for us. We are able to bring clients to market that don't qualify today pretty quickly. 60 points in, in, in 90 days is, is pretty quick. Um, and then one last thing is, we focus on everything on a credit report, but we do take the path of least resistance, right? If you've got auto repos on there from four or five years ago, having you settle those accounts, it's not in your best interest. Let's take on the smaller debts. Let's negotiate where we can for deletion to get the most out of your credit score. It's not about perfect credit. It's about getting your credit score north of 620 or 640 so you can move forward with the mortgage process, right? And the home buying process. Dude, it. absolutely crushed it. Thank you, Todd. Um, in the chat, I don't know if you can see it. We've got wows. We got to learn a lot today. Very informative. Much appreciated. Uh, this is the value of having a great guest. And Todd, you definitely brought your A game again today. So I will say I'll give you that putt that's on the borderline when we play <laughs> between a gimme and a you should make it. I'll give you that one. So as we wrap up, um, for those of you uh, that are either here or listening on replay, Todd is in town, uh, but they don't just service here in Las Vegas. Todd, what uh, what's your territory? Yeah, yeah we're, we're national. And today we work with eight of the top 10 home builders in the country. So Lennar, Pulte, KB, Ryan Holmes, if you've got customers you're dealing with that are in credit repair with those companies, that's us. So for those of you that are wondering about credibility, I don't know that you can get any bigger credibility than uh, somebody that's dealing with eight of the 10 largest home builders in town and Carrie Phillips. I mean, hello, it doesn't get any bigger and better than those combinations right there. Todd, any, any closing thoughts? That's, that's all I got. I put my contact information there in the chat if you guys want it. If, you, if you, you've got a customer in front of you and you're not sure, I'm happy to start the conversation, happy to, to look at their credit file, happy to give them some, some advice. Um, and happy to give you any advice if you want. Thank you, Todd. So it's Todd at ecreditadvisor.com and his number is 702-275-9036.
702-275-9036. Thank you so much for taking your time today for everybody on the call. Uh, have a spectacular day. And if you're listening on replay, we'd love to see you live as well. All right. That's Jody. it for now. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Jody. Thanks.